This is the MPG Z790 Edge Wi-Fi motherboard from MSI. It's built around the LGA 1700 socket and the latest Z790 chipset that supports the 12th and 13th gen Intel CPUs. In the box, they give us three M.2 drive locks and they're all individually packaged. So if you just need one, you can keep the other ones in their package and hopefully not lose them. They give us two SATA cables. One has a 90 degree connector and then the other one's just straight. This is basically a sticker book. It's got some MSI logo badges and some other stuff. Um, yeah, if you want to stick that all over your case or whatever, go for it. And then we got the usual paperwork, you know, the user manual and that kind of stuff. And this box that was sitting on top when we first opened everything has the antenna for the built-in Wi-Fi 6E. And it also comes with a little stand so you can get it sitting upright. And here's the board. The MPG series is supposed to be all about blending performance with style, and I think that's totally obvious the second you take a look at this board. There's a lot of attention to detail here. The heat sinks are all silver with a nice textured finish, and there's lots of text and other stuff printed all over the place. It's a very detailed look, and I think it gives off a premium vibe. The bright silver color, it really pops against the black PCV and makes the whole thing stand out and should look really good in a highly visible system. MSI used a six layer PCB that they say is made from server grade material. The whole thing feels really heavy and solid and that's mostly due to that huge amount of metal including the thermal armor and those heat sinks that cover like 50% of the surface area. I tend to like big heavy components, it just kind of makes me feel like they're more durable or more dependable than something that would be lightweight and kind of flimsy. We have dual 8-pin CPU power connectors on here. That's really important, especially for high-end CPUs. Gotta make sure they have enough juice to hit those high clock speeds and remain stable. There's a 16 plus 1 plus 1 phase VRM power design. MOSFETs are sitting under a set of two big heat sinks joined together by a direct touch heat pipe. And then there's some thermal pads over the chokes to help keep those cool as well. The cooling system on here is pretty beefy and it looks like it should do a good job at keeping the power circuitry running cool and that's obviously important again for stability and longevity on higher end systems. And even with all those big heat sinks on here, it still feels like there's a decent amount of space around the socket, so I'm thinking it shouldn't be too difficult getting a CPU and cooler installed, but I'll find that out later when I use this board in a build. We have four DDR5 DIMM slots with a maximum capacity of 192 gigabytes of non-ECC unbuffered memory at JDEX speeds up to 5600 megahertz and an insane 7200 megahertz OC. There's a memory compatibility list on MSI's website that'll help you pick out supported RAM and I strongly recommend that you check that out before you pick whatever RAM kit you want to go with because some boards can be kind of picky when it comes to RAM so you just don't want to get into the system build process and find out your RAM doesn't work or you're having stability issues or anything right so check that list make sure you get supported RAM. This board has five separate M.2 slots and they're all hidden under the thermal armor which provides a little bit of passive cooling for your drives. Slots are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. They can all support storage devices up to 2280 in size, and slot 1 can take up to 22110. Now this is important, only slot number 1 is connected directly to the CPU. All the other ones are routing through the Z790 chipset, so you want to make sure that you keep that in mind when you're planning your drive configuration in your system. For added storage, there's also 7 SATA 6 gigabits per second ports configured in a bank of 6, plus one single port over here on the bottom right corner. So altogether, that's a lot of storage potential on here with a total of 12 drive connectors. There's three PCIe expansion slots and they're all running different versions. Slot number one supports PCIe 5.0 times 16, slot number three supports PCIe 4.0 times four, and slot number two supports PCIe 3.0 times one. And just like the M.2 drives, only slot number one's direct to the CPU, all the others are going through the chipset. So that means you're gonna wanna make sure your GPU is installed in that first slot, otherwise you could face some bandwidth limitations. There's four internal USB headers, two here, plus two more over here, and this one's the 10 gigabits per second Type-C connector for the front panel. Audio components are in the bottom left corner. It's a Realtek ALC4080 codec supporting 7.1 channels and up to 32-bit playback. There's lots of room for fans with a total of eight fan connectors. These two are for your CPU fan and water pump, and then we have system fans, number one, two, three, four, five, and six. In addition to the integrated RGB on the Dragon logo, there's a lot of room to add your own accessories. We have one four pin RGB header here and three pin ARGB headers here, here, and here. So tons of RGB options with this board and you can sync everything up using MSI's Mystic Light software app. This board also has a TPM module connector right here and a Thunderbolt add-in card connector over here. 
The back panel has a pre-installed IO shield and there's DisplayPort, HDMI, CMOS clear and BIOS flash, eight USB type A ports, two USB type C ports, including one supporting 20 gigabits per second speeds, LAN and Wi-Fi connectors, and this board supports Wi-Fi 6E. And then there's the audio jacks and an optical port. Overall, it's a solid offering from MSI. It's got strong power regulation components, tons of expansion for storage, cooling, and RGB accessories, and it's got that steel armor plating and big heat sinks. It's a nice looking board for high-end system builders that like to have a lot of flexibility and customization options. I'll put a list with the full specs and details for you down in the description of this video, so make sure you check that out if you're interested in learning more. And I'll also throw some purchasing links down there for you as well. And give the video a thumbs up and make sure you get subscribed for more content. And we'll see you soon.